In this video, we're going to show how to create a basic skirt without importing a DXF file, doing all the work inside vStitcher. To start, we go to the main menu and click File, then New Garment. Having selected the avatar, we need to make some measurements to help us create pattern pieces of the right size. We need to know the size of the narrowest part of the waist and the size of the widest part, which is at the hips. To do the measurements, we start by right-clicking the avatar, then clicking Edit Avatar. The avatar details are displayed in the context view. We ensure the Measurements tab is selected. We click on the waist measurement. Note how this is highlighted on the avatar. We are going to create four pattern pieces. The hip measurement is 93 centimeters, so each pattern piece should be one quarter of 93 centimeters, namely 23.25 centimeters. We'll round this up to 23.5. Next, we subtract the waist measurement from the hip. 93 centimeters minus 68 centimeters is 25 centimeters. Since we plan on four pattern pieces, we again divide by four, which gives us 6.25 centimeters. Each piece will need to be approximately 6.25 centimeters narrower at the waist than the hemline. Now let's create the pattern pieces. We go to the main toolbar, click Insert, and ensure Rectangle is selected on the horizontal contextual menu. Then we go to the 2D window and draw the first pattern piece. Then we go to the main toolbar, click Select, and click the piece to select it. The piece details are displayed in the context view. The width and height are, by default, connected. This means any change to one value automatically triggers a proportionate change in the other. Because we want to edit these values separately, we click the icon to disconnect the values. We type in 23.5 for the width and 50 for the height. This is a random number. We can choose any number for the height that we think would be reasonable. We can always change this later. Next, we add a point. To do this, we'll use the pen tool. Note that the Edit Points options is selected. We want this point to be exactly 21 centimeters from the waist. So after clicking, we type in 21 in the box that displays and the point is accurately located. Note that the original four points are corner points and displayed with a square icon. The new point is not a corner point and is displayed with a circle icon. We can use this point to shape the line, but not to divide it. If we wanted to, we could change this by selecting the new point, going to the context view, and selecting corner point. Now we want to move one of the points. Using the select tool, we select the point and go to the transformation part of the context view. In the X part, we type in 3.5 and the point moves 3.5 centimeters along the x-axis. We also want to move the same point one centimeter upwards. With the same point selected, we go to the transformation part of the context view, and in the y part, we type in negative one. The point moves one centimeter up the y-axis. Note, on the y-axis, a negative number causes movement up the axis, and a positive number causes movement down the axis. We're now going back to the intermediate point we added so that we can change the angle of the line there. With the point selected, we go to the curve type in the context view. If sharp is selected, no handles are displayed. If curved is selected, two handles are displayed, one white and one red. Whatever way we drag one of the handles has no effect on the other. If smooth is selected, two connected handles are displayed. Whatever way we drag one of the handles affects the other. For this pattern piece, we want only one handle, the upper handle, to be effective. So we select Curved for the curve type and make our adjustments on the upper handle to make a nice, smooth curve. We double-click the lower handle to delete it. You can do this step using the handles in the context view. We also want to adjust the top left corner point. Again, we select Curved for the curve type and make our adjustments. Now that we are happy with our pattern piece, we are going to duplicate it. We use the keyboard shortcut of Control D and a duplicate is created. We have two pieces, one for the front and the other for the back. We still need to reduce the waist. 
we needed to reduce each one by 6.25 centimeters, and so far, have only reduced each by 3.5 centimeters. To do this, we are going to add darts. There are two ways to do this. The first way is with the pen tool. On the top edge of the piece, we click where we want to add the point and type in the number for the exact placement we want. In this case, it's 7 centimeters. We make that a corner point. Then we add another point 2.5 centimeters from the first, again making this a corner point. To create the dart, we need to find the center between these two points. With the pen tool still selected, we go to the horizontal contextual menu and click Snap to Center. Now, when we hover on the line between the two points, the center is highlighted for us to click on and create the point. Again, we make the point a corner point. We want the dart to be 11 centimeters deep and the curve type to be sharp. With the point selected, we go to the context view. In the transformation section, we type in 11 in the Y part, and in curve type, we select sharp. The point is moved on the pattern piece. Finally, we delete the handle for the two points at the top. Now we'll create a dart on the back pattern piece using the dart tool. We go to the main toolbar, click insert, and then select pleats slash darts. In the 2D window, we click on the center of the top line and the dart outline is added. We drag the bottom up to create the dart. Now we go to the center point. In the context view, in the transformation section, we type in a width of 3.5 and a depth of 15. We also want to give this dart the fully stitched property, and that completes the dart. Now we have half of the front of the skirt and half of the back. We select the right edge of the front piece. We go to the context view at Edge Symmetry and click Create. Now we have our complete front pattern piece. We repeat this with the back piece. The effect of creating a piece using symmetry is that whatever operation we do on one side is automatically duplicated on the other side. Before going any further, let's change the name of our pieces. On the Resources tabs, we go to the 2D section and type in the names we want to use. FR for the front piece, BK for the back piece. Now we are going to arrange the pattern pieces. We go to the main toolbar and click Arrange. We drag the front pattern piece to the front skirt cluster. We drag the back pattern piece to the back skirt cluster. To better see the arranged pieces, we go to the main toolbar and click Prepare. The back piece is a little low, so we drag it up. The front piece is too close to the avatar, so we move it out. For the best fit, it's important to see the pieces correctly arranged and balanced. Note that the back pattern piece darts are already stitched because of how we created them. The front darts are not stitched yet. We go to the main toolbar and click Stitch. Then we click on the dart edges in the 2D window. Note that because of the piece symmetry, we only need to stitch one dart and the other is stitched automatically. Now let's stitch the front and back together. We'll do this in the 3D window. Note again that because of the piece symmetry, we only need to stitch one side and the other is stitched automatically. Before simulating the skirt, we'll have a final look to make sure everything appears okay. There are no collisions between the pattern pieces or with the avatar. It all looks good. We go to the main toolbar and click Dress. Here's our skirt! And that's how to create a garment entirely within vStitcher. For more information, go to the Browseware Help Center at support.browseware.com.